up? It's a wee natter. I'm Mark Steele and across the table from me is... Jenny Steele. And we're joining you on the week. We finally found a film Jenny has seen, but I haven't, dear mm. listener. And we found out, and it's always this sort of drive, isn't it? Dark, wet, windy drive home. Yeah. But a song popped up. You're the best around. Nothing's going to whatever. Da, 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 da. You know the song, don't you? I do, yeah. I'm trying to think of the film. You, you can't think what the film is now. No. Wow. Karate Kid. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. So I've never seen it. Uh, so based on your advice, Miss Jenny, do you think I should be seeing Karate Kid? I should have seen it in my life? I think you should. It's, it's not a bad film, to be honest. The tricky bit is going to be, how do we find an 80s film on the internet nowadays? Can That's you going to YouTube be... it? <laughs> I'm sure there must be a dodgy copy somewhere or something. On a more positive note and a more legal note, the post bag has arrived. And last time we asked about what has quietly disappeared without us noticing or knowing. Uh, age has been in touch saying the milkman. One day you're a cheeky teenager pinching the neighbour's extra bottle. I'm certain it was ordered for stray neighbourhood kids wandering past. And suddenly it's, I haven't seen a Milko in years. Such a shame. I enjoyed the neighbour's milk. <laughs> Have a nice day and stay cosy. And on that note, I do remember with the bottles in the cold weather like we've had quite recently here, dear listener, in Nottinghamshire, you had the top popping off as the milk froze and it was getting bigger. And you yeah, get the, you did. Yeah. yeah. And on that, I haven't had a milkman in years. I've not even seen a milkman in years. Until the other day, one chapped on the door saying, oh, we're starting to offer a milk round. <laughs> Are you interested? And when he sell them all, oh, I'll only use about a pint a week. Yeah. The face do. just drops at that point. It's like... Yeah, that's not even worth bothering. <laughs> also in touch, slap-ups. All my favourite treats as a kid, for I'm constantly finding myself going, hang about, where's that thing I love? What do you mean they stopped making it? Tab Cola, Mellow Yellow, and their favourite rice pudding as well. Oh. Is there any sweets that you miss? Can you still get gobstoppers? <laughs> I'm sure they must sell some sort of gobstoppers. And on a slightly different topic, uh, the Radio Leaving crew have been saying they've been enjoying the Solid Radio yeah. podcast. They've been touching the socials. Probably not because of us, do you listen? Uh, understandable. <laughs> It'll be uh, Mr. Hall and his country store. That'll be the bit that they'll be actually enjoying. But in case you're also enjoying this other bit, it's glad to have you on board. And on that note, let's have a wee answer. <laughs> Now, I think I already know the answer to this one, but I'm going to open up to you anyway, dear listener, and you, Jenny, as well. Do you procrastinate? Yes, I do, actually, yeah. It's something everyone yeah. does, do not they? And the reason I ask is I've got a deadline this Thursday with the Open University. Got to write a 4,000-word essay. How much do you think I've done already? And you've not done any of it. I keep mentioning it to you and you keep like, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll plan, that's my blah, blah evening. And then that evening comes and you've not done absolutely, you've done nothing, Mark. So I think you've not even written one word. By the time this episode comes out, I I, I probably have not written a word mm. and it's literally two days to the deadline. So I've got two options available to me, dear listener. One of them is to pull a few all-nighters and get something out the door. Mm -hmm. But I'm not young anymore. You know, my knees sound like football rattles going up the stairs. <laughs> I'll be in bed by 10. I'm not going to manage an all-nighter. It's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, the second option, have you heard of something called chat GPT? No. So it's AI where you give it a prompt and it writes something for you. Does it? Do you think they'll notice if I try that? No. Although I now mentioned it on the podcast, so as long as my as long as my <laughs> academic leaders have not not heard of this podcast, we're we're all right, dear listener. Just don't shock me, all right. We went out for a coffee yesterday, didn't we, Mark? As I call it, a posh coffee. Uh, it's crazy, isn't it? Why would you do something like that? Uh, but but as I was sitting at mm. the table waiting for you to bring the coffee as. as the norm. Charming. I, I just kind of look at looking around me and I thought it's really busy in here today. It's absolutely it was just piling in, piling in, piling in until it got to the case where people were coming in, quite big groups, and there was no way for them to sit. And I was like looking around and I've noticed there was people that had there was there before us and there was mm. you know quite big groups and they clearly finished the teas and the coffees they've got no cakes or anything on the table. And they were sat there before we came in and they were sat there while we were drinking our coffees and they were sat there when we'd finished and we was ready to go. And I, I don't know what I would do. If that, if, say if that coffee shop was yours, mm -hmm. you can see literally money walking back out the door because these people have been sat there for quite some time taking up the tables. What 
what do you do if that was yours? Would you have a polite word with them? I, I just started to get a little bit irritated thinking, you know, why are you still sat there? You can see people are having it coming in, looking around. And I mean, there was this family had to sit outside. It was freezing cold yesterday. We had to take the kids and sit outside because there's nowhere for them to sit inside. And I thought, that's a little bit selfish in my eyes, really. You just get the gist, wouldn't you, and get your coats on and go. But it seems to be a meeting place now, coffee shops, for you to just have a pot of tea and hang around for about for the next three hours over a pot of tea. But it's all about experience, though, isn't it? You you don't go to these places just to stuff your face and fill your belly, do you? You, you, you go there mm. to enjoy some time with whether it's a friend's, a business quiz, whatever. It's being in that environment together, having that time, and by the way, they happen to offer coffee and biscuits and whatever. That's what it's about. And effectively, you're renting that table for that time. So I totally understand why you wouldn't want to go interfere with that. Because if, if it got to the point where you're literally booting people out the moment they finish their coffee, nobody would come to your coffee shop. Like, no, I don't mean it that quick. No. They, they'd literally finished. They've got nothing left in the glasses. And we was queuing, got the drinks, had the drinks, and they were still sat there. So I don't know how long they've been sat there with all with nothing, you know. Just get your coats and go, because there's people coming in wanting a table. <laughs> do you need to make it like they used to do at the supermarket when you were at the deli counter? You get a little ticket, and that's that, that, that's saying right, you're you're allowed to join. That's you ready to get your oh, table. I know swimming bass as a kid. You whatever time you went in, you got a mm. little pin with a colour on, and then the, the siren had flashed the colour when it was your turn to get out of the pool. That's probably what we should have. I can, I can see I can see you trying this. I don't think it's going to work. But as an experiment, we're going to go try and find a coffee shop, <laughs> give this a shot, and we'll report back the results. <laughs> now, this is going to sound weird, but how much Coke is too much? Are we talking Coca-Cola or like roller cola? Or are we talking Coke? It makes it sound like we're running some sort of yeah. shady bank in the 80s, doesn't it? No, I'm talking about the drink, of course, dear listener. And it, the reason I ask is I'm getting through about eight bottles a week. And if, you know, if you remember the experiments at primary school where you put things in Coca-Cola, I'll have super clean insides mm. and no need for dental work in the future because I'll have no teeth. No teeth. <laughs> That's the way it's going. But I've been on the internet and been looking at things where you're going, hang on a minute, I really consume that much of that. And you said they're going, my family goes for an alarming amount of this stuff. So I've been on the internet looking at some of the some of the concerns people have been dealing with. And if you're from the UK and you shop at Sainsbury's, you will co- have come across the nectar emails. Oh they yes. Come out once a year yeah. and shame you for what you buy too much of. Mm. And it, you know, it shames you for being number one in the area for fit, but in my case, purchasing Findus Crispy pancakes. <laughs> Which is impressive because they don't sell them anymore. <laughs> and uh, apparently this person I was looking on, like, number one person in Scotland for caramelised onion hummus. I mean, I like hummus, but no, onions, hummus. onions, hummus? onions can get in the sea. Yeah. They're just wrong. Nothing good comes from onions. They, they, they like ruin onions. food. Sorry, I like onions. I was trying to think what hummus was. Is it hummus or hummus? Oh, whatever one is. Is it hummus? The, the, what the, is hummus? The dip. It tastes nice. It's, oh. it's all right. Yeah. Uh, but it got me wondering, dear listener. Now, I'm opening this up to you. I'm opening this up to you, Jenny, as well. <laughs> what does your household use an alarming amount of? There's a question, eh? Yeah. Oh, God. It used to be chocolate. Not anymore. And um, why is it not anymore? Because I'm trying to lose my weight. I keep putting on. <laughs> <laughs> so I open it up to you, dear listener. What does your household use an alarming amount of at Solid Radio UK or at Solid City on the socials? Or if you're on Spotify, a little box has popped up. You can tap on the question and stick your answer in there as well. If I asked you what linked Bolivia and zebras, what pops into mind? I don't know. So not zebra mascots helping people cross the road at Zebra Crossing. No. (laughs) It's something they've been doing for literally decades now, dear listener. But it got me wondering if we need an upgrade on the... Road safety hedgehogs that we used to have here in the UK. I don't know if they're still a thing, but that was how... Never road... seen a road safety hedgehog. No, not about uh, look left, look right. That's a Green Cross man, wasn't it? The Green Cross man. Wasn't it the Green Cross man? <laughs> or Petunia. Oh, Petunia? It, you, you, you're going back to earlier revisions. That's, uh, that's what's going remember on. remember Petunia. Lovely day, Petunia. I'm not going to admit no, to remember No, not Petunia. That. Charlie the Cat, wasn't it? <laughs> it was Charlie the Cat. I'll take your word for it. 
Charlie says that one. I, I'm taking your word for it. I'm not going to admit <laughs> to knowing that one. On the topic of hedgehogs, because that's how they taught road safety when I was a little one, I saw a real one. They're quicker than I imagined. They are. Because everyone assumes that they get flattened on the road. And they, they absolutely zoom up they the street. Zoom. I don't know why. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I think we've got the hang of zebra crossings in the UK. Mm. You know, out of all the different crossings we've got, I think zebra for crossings covered. We don't need zebras. Do we need do, pelican do... crossings still? That'd be interesting. <laughs> you know, like pelican. a pelican mascot. Yeah, yeah. You, do, you do get that sort of thing. <laughs> but I'm thinking the real one that we, you know, not a lot of people have heard of that we re- really need a mascot to help us learn about is the Pegasus crossing. <laughs> you know what that one is? Go on. It's it's a real thing. It's genuine. It's a crossing for horses, horses. as well. Yeah. So you get a separate little traffic light for the horses. So I like know, it. The horses yeah. know when they cross. I just got me wondering, do horses see colours? Could they understand the red and the green? I think we could ask Ellie Merritt that. She looks after <laughs> the horses. Come on, Ellie, let us know. <laughs> so I'm, very, I'm thinking to, to teach the general public about Pegasus crossings and the fact they even exist. We need a Pegasus mascot, mm. which if you're going back to the olden times, the Pegasus character is a flying horse. It is, yeah. So all we need is a horse and some fairy wings, and I think we've got our next public safety film. If I said there was a baker in Scotland selling biscuits with icing on them, you'd say... I've seen them. Yes. I've tasted them. What if I told you they were selling biscuits in the shape of a certain Mr Blobby? Are they? Yes. Would you eat one, or would you look at it and think, nah, it's too many calories? I would eat the biscuit as I was offered it, if that's that's what you're asking. But I'm also sitting there going, you know, kids going into this bakery, and this is a genuine thing. They are still selling Mr. Bobby cakes in the 2020s. (laughs) The kids coming in to look at this thing have no No idea idea. what the character is. (laughs) In fact, because uh, this podcast, dear listener, does have an international audience. It does. You might have to explain Mr. Bobby, Jenny. Mr. Bobby, I think, what was he on? Was he on Noel Edmonds' house party, was it? Part of the gotchas, wasn't it? Yeah, it's part of the gotchas. It was the whole thing of no lemons would wind some celebrity or some well-known person up. Yeah. And he would pop out the costume. So isn't it some yeah. geezer in like a 12-foot pink costume with... Did he have yellow polka dots on? Yes, and sounded like your nightmares as well. Yeah. They, they went very heavy on <laughs> yeah. the sound effects. Can't even describe the voice, but it, it just like bang into people and everywhere it went, it'd bang in and knock things over and fall over and just basically cause chaos while I keep repeating... Blobby, blobby, blobby. So it was a wind up for a TV show mm. that turned into there's there he was had a song, f- didn't it? Song theme parks, yeah. all sorts going on. It was ridiculous. But the fact that there's a blobby biscuits <laughs> is not the only blobby news to break this week. Any idea why he might be making headlines in 2023? This is dear listener. Um, live healthy, otherwise you could end up like Mr. Blobby. <laughs> oh, that was something school teachers used to get in newspapers for in, uh, when Mr. Blobby was big in the 90s. Oh, right. Because, uh, yeah, some kid would call their, you know, oh, their right. teacher Mr. Blobby. Yeah. And then they'd be in the newspapers <laughs> and all that. But anyway, it turns out somebody has one of the original costumes from the 90s oh. and is flogging it on eBay, right? It's bidding started about 40 quid, which is not bad for a unique costume that would... Definitely scare on Halloween. Imagine that turning up at your front door. door. <laughs> yeah, it would definitely give you a bit of a fright, wouldn't you? How much do you think? At the time, I must stress, at time of recording, dear listener, how much do you think it's going for now? I'm going to say something absolutely stupidly ridiculous like 10 grand. It's over 30 grand. Oh, minute. you see what I mean? That's a car, isn't it? That's a Tesla, isn't it? <laughs> Personally, I'm waiting for Beanie Babies to rocket in value anytime now. <laughs> Only apologise, dear listener. That was a wee matter. I was Mark Steele. Across the table from me was Jenny Steele. Can I actually just say one more thing? Oh, you go know on. We started the show and we were talking about frozen milk. Frozen milk, milk yes. Yeah, and I think I was having a little bit of a banter with uh, with age about it as well. And I was saying, I don't know if you remember that. Um, you know how you say when it gets frozen and you got like a little bit of a nice colour of milk with a little silver. Well, you could have had gold top if you had, like, you know, if you wanted the thick, creamy milk. Gold, you? gold top is basically liquid cream. Well, yes. yeah. When it was snowing, we used to find little imprints of birds' feet all around, like in a little circle around the milk bottle, and they pet the top off. I didn't know they did that. Yeah. I, I remember the seeing the, the top coming off. We didn't even yeah. get milk delivered. I just remember seeing it with the neighbours. Well, if you're <laughs> posh, you got yogurt. The neighbour used to uh, have yogurts delivered. 
I think I, I might have taken one when I was four because I was jealous because they had yogurt and I didn't. Oh, charming. I wanted to try yogurt. I never had yogurt before. It was a new thing to me. Maybe we need to start a confessions <laughs> thing. I will, I'll get a whole bunch of reverb going and get some oh, oh, oh chanting in the background. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, make, we'll make it a thing where you can get in touch to a listener and confess your sins. I took a ski yogurt when I was four. <laughs> that's what that's the bar we're starting at yeah. it's not a big one to clear but if you think you can clear it do get in touch and talking about getting in touch ways to ways to listen that's a bit slightly more important so mm. there are a couple of ways of getting this fine podcast one of them is to search for a wee natter on your podcatcher of choice and it'll just pop up uh, other option is to search for solid radio you'll see a pair of purple mountains mm. and it'll also pop up album with a whole bunch of other stuff as well the choice is yours but the important bit is you have to tell every single person you bump into this week a wee natter exists and need to get it on their podcast. Defo. That's, that's all. That's all you need to do. <laughs> and on that note, I think we'll catch you next time. Bye for now.